we're using Amazing Congratulations. I want to grab one of the stamps. I don't want to show y'all something. Um, it does come with instructions and tips and pictures. I've stamped all mine apparently, but I'm going to show y'all how to use it now so you don't need that. <laughs> and I just randomly stuck these here so I'd have what I need out. And I stuck a piece of scratch paper in there yesterday um, to because I had ink everywhere. Okay, so let me check my notes here. Magnets. Okay, so the Stamparatus comes with two plates, first of all. I have one in here. You should only store one at a time on, like if I put this away. So the second one should just be stacked loose. You should not put the second one in and close it because you're going to break it. So just store it like that. They are removable on purpose. I'll show you what all that's for in a minute. But the magnets, I have one here and there's one here. Um, it comes with two. You store one here, one here. You want them very far apart from each other so they don't snap together and break. Stampin' Up! gave us a long, complicated explanation that says um, basically that they are actually the higher quality magnets break when they snap together. The lower quality magnets don't. So we have the high quality ones. So a lot of people have been doing things like wrapping them in washi tape so that if they touch, they won't break. Um, or just keeping them far apart. So I'm just only gonna use one today, honestly, because I tried it yesterday, it worked for me. I don't wanna break it on camera <laughs> or break it, period. Um, so I'm using one magnet. It does hold through this foam. So underneath here is a grid, but the main reason to remove the foam is if you're using red rubber clear stamps, red rubber, because they're, they're thicker. When you're using photopolymer like we are today, stick this mat on here. If you need grid lines, just cut up a piece of your Stampin' Up! grid paper, which we sell. Um, cut it that size, stick it on here. Um, I haven't found I needed it yet on the one sample I made. <laughs> so I cracked myself up. So I have my magnet. <laughs> Land is agreeing with my laughing. Okay, so I figured out what size I needed this paper to be cut, so I cut it. It's Whisper White. It is, just in case you want to recreate this card, one and three fourths by five. And I'm going with the put it in the corner method so that when I reproduce this card over and over, I know to put it in the corner every time. But another thing you can do is mark on here where you place your paper to repeat or um, use grid paper and mark the grid. So lots of options there, but I like it in the corner, easier on me. Then you position, hopefully I'll clean this good from yesterday. You position your stamp on your paper first. It says, congrats, it says part of congratulations. And then you close your stamp apparatus. And when you open it, um, the stamp is where you need it to be. Now, it pulled up my paper because there's no ink on here. Also, if your stamp is brand new and it hasn't been inked much, it's going to be even, um, it will be stickier the first few times you use it on here. But anyway, because I know it goes in the corner, just put it back. It's fine. And then you ink up your stamp. So I'm going to do it this way. The beauty... One of the many beauties of Stamparatus is if you um, if you don't get enough ink, you can just re-ink it and re-stamp it. So you don't have to stress about that. You close it and you press. This is easy. Why bother with the Stamparatus? Because um, some people are perfectionists. <laughs> some people have shaky hands or arthritis or other problems that cause weakness in their hands and arms. Um, I actually have those issues sometimes if my stuff is acting up. Um, and you can do lots of other techniques with this. So that's why um, if you, you know, love to eyeball and stamp, which I actually don't mind it at all, then go for that. So I think my S right here needs more ink. This is, by the way, powder pink. And my G. So you can re-ink the whole thing if you want, but those are the main areas where I'm going to try to get more ink. So this is one of the beautiful things on Stamparatus. And also there's no rocking. So if you're a person who accidentally gets those edges when you stamp, you don't need to worry about that because you're not going to do it on this. 
a little bit more and then we should be good. Um, okay, so next we want this image here. Now I'm going to possibly have to stick my head in the camera because you, or hit my head on the um, the ceiling here, my shelf. Anyway, you need to be able to see that you're really aligning this particular image where the cursive continues into the other cursive. Um, I think it's good, but my head's a little off. Like, I can't get it as close as I want, so obviously you'll do that correct when you're at home. Um, so, when I get ready to close this, oops, it's going to hit that stamp. Well, don't worry. Take this out. Pull it straight up. Don't pull it from the side or here. Straight up. Pull it out. Flip it around. And now we have another surface. And why we don't want to remove the first one is because now I can stamp this 50 more times and not have to um, replace these stamps every time. Okay, so another tip here, we're going to use Calypso Coral next. This is, well, first of all, it's a darker color, but also it's just more convenient. But I can take my Calypso Coral and do what I did with the powder pink. It is darker, like I said, so you'll definitely see where you've hit your Stamparatus in different parts and even on these hinges and gotten ink, which shouldn't mess up your project, so don't stress on that, but it can mess up your hands, your clothing, <laughs> other paper you lay on here, whatever. So, I got this tip from other demonstrators to use a Stampin' Spot. Now, I told y'all earlier, save your Stampin' Spots from Paper Pumpkin. And honestly, I thought of that while I was doing the video just now. So, I'm going to have to dig out all my spots from Paper Pumpkin and catalog them and see what colors I have. I hope I don't have a coral because I made my own. We do sell uninked spots. Item code 141822. Uninked spots. You get five in a pack. And there's no ink on them. So I took my Calypso Coral Reinker yesterday. I wrote coral right here because I always use these upside down anyway so I can see what, read what color it is while I'm stamping. Then I won't mess up. <laughs> um, and I put not much ink on there at all, honestly. Let me show you guys in case you buy these and you add ink to them. If I can open it. <laughs> I guess it's airtight. I'll have to get, uh, get it closer to me for muscles. The ink didn't even sink through to this part of the pad, and I inked this yesterday. So I tested it this morning, and it's perfectly inked. So I always, just in general, for inking, I always go with less is more because I can always add, but I can't take away. Okay, so anyway, the reason for using these would be that it keeps you from making a mess all over here, which it does just wipe off, but hey, anything that can help us be less messy and have less cleanup. Um, this is Calypso Coral, which I'm using because I'm combining these two colors because of the Sweet Soiree Designer Paper, which is what I used on my card. Those are two colors in the design that I used, which is this design here. So coral and pink. Um, that's just like FYI on color combination. How you can get it is use designer paper. And... This paper is super pretty and it has some really pretty color combinations. So FYI, especially in my opinion for this stamp set, which um, can be intimidating. It's like, well, what three, two to three colors do I want to use? Look at your designer paper. Okay, um, so I inked it up. Let's stamp it and see what happens. Hopefully it's going to look awesome. Oh, it looks awesome. I don't even need to re-ink anything. Check it out, y'all. So good. Now, I just want to show you, I'm not actually going to do this. Um, the reason for this one is you have two more stamping surfaces, a total of four. You can do up to four step stamping on one project. So you place that one there. Remember when you store it, take that off. Um, the other stamp that goes with this image, and actually I'm not sure, honestly, if this little swirly thing also is a part of Congratulations, I need to figure that out. But this is the outline, and I didn't like it for this card, but if I wanted to use it, I would align it perfectly, place this down, ink it up, and stamp congratulations. And then I could flip this around and add even another image, maybe the greeting that goes right there. So that's the purpose of your other plate. 
not it's not an extra it's to be used um okay so let me i'm gonna sneak a peek at my notes here and see if oh i did want to show you guys one other thing um but let me uh, let me not have y'all show me <laughs> read my notes um i told you about the phone mat store with one not attached four sides four steps Okay, so the last thing is um, this thing called, well, Stampin' Up! calls it the hinge step. And what it is, um, and I have not practiced this, so, and this was just a random scrap of Whisper White I grabbed. You stamp your image, like normal Stamparatus style, and then you move it down one or two or three, however many hinges you want or need for that project. And you stamp it again. And it's going to be perfectly spaced based on how many hinges you skip each time. Of course, I realize that's not inking perfectly, but I'm just showing you all this really quickly. Then I could flip it around and I could fill in the dark. This actually does work pretty well. <clears throat> with this um, layout, I guess, configuration, whatever. Check it out. So I can continue down. So that's called the hinge step. That's also why you want the stamp apparatus. <laughs> um, okay, so that's how you use it. Uh, hopefully, let me see, I'll just leave it there. Hopefully you guys think it's awesome like me. These were some other colors I played around with for this card, but um, in my opinion, I didn't like them on the designer paper. So I just switched it up to only the two colors and then I added on your big news the designer paper is uh, three and three-fourths by five the Calypso coral is four by five and a fourth normal card base which is eight and a half by five and a half and then I already told you the size of this one so this piece is just one fourth inch taller so two inches by five two by five for that piece there and that's powder pink I just I did not use the Stamparatus to stamp the swoosh and on your big news which both both come in this stamp set um, I stamped those freehand but I could have used it since I only used the two images I could have used the two from my second platform um, if I wanted so that is the card I'm showing you. This is not the one we're making at the class, although it may end up being similar. I just don't know yet. 